Jag tror det är det. Men jag har ju det in jag här. Du kan höra det här. Nu har du ju gått över där en lång period. Jag har I all the prisoners in Tonga got a copy of this poem. Yes. And the British authorities, they are very to listen. And I thought that door, I can't hear it. Well, Tim, yeah, you are. The British authorities in the camp encouraged us to fill this in. So we tackled in here, didn't we? Let's go over here. I knew that this commission was there to hear, and I said they already know. The champ authorities and heard that they already knew there was a number, big number of men here who were they were innocent. They were innocent. Yeah. <coughs> Others who were only in a minor way. Yeah. Guilty. And uh, that, you know what? Uh, this commission was set up to clear out as many as they could out of the road. It wasn't so much for a bit of awareness to get a room at. No, it was to get a room for it. Yeah. So, however, there was a number of us, including Rand and myself, not more, but 40 or 50, not more than that. We refused to sign them. Yeah. Because it was an appeal. Yes, I see. You recognised the court. Appeal, recognised the court. Oh, well, they recognised the non-recognition of the court. It hadn't come no, in. it hadn't, that. But the point was, it was an appeal I to England to let me... For mercy. For mercy. <coughs> and we wouldn't put it in. Because, among other things, too, the various groups met. Yeah. The groups, meaning from the various parts of Ireland, yeah. met and discussed it. Yeah. And we, the northern group, also met. Uh -huh. And it was put up to us that we had a great case. Yeah. Getting away, and that was <coughs> that we joined the IRA. Uh, their volunteers to pit against Justin's volunteers. Yes, I see. And they were an admitted menace to us. I see, yeah. And therefore, you say, do you say that? Well, then no, no, that wasn't against England. It was only against these persons that were going to I see. attack you. That certainly wouldn't have been what you put people no, to believe I, that. I strongly objected, you see, to having put such a thing in to anybody's mind. Yes, I know. You see, because Every one of us had to either and you might have to yeah. step on Justin's men and the way through, but it was England we were at. Yeah. And uh, if we, uh, it was a plain lie, but not apart from plain a lie, that wasn't the point. It was leaving it under false colours. Yeah. And it would last for the rest of our lives yeah. at home. In yes, fact, I know. You were uh, joined a force to beat us. Yes, I you know. You see, and give the ones men a handle to show I know. what you might expect. <coughs> so, then, <coughs> in due course of it, oh, there were hundreds of these forms were sent in. Yeah. In due course, starting about a fortnight hence, after we got them, they started to take away three hundred loads of men. The men had already signed it. They signed it, you see. Uh, not similar. I had just a very good reason for it. They were taken off their farms. Yeah. Sorry for me, I was taken out of my school. Uh, but they better taken off his farm, his crops could go uh, lost. was the month of June. And uh, they, they weren't, they weren't in the move. No, I know. But somebody apparently had been seen talking, there was a fine, upstanding blacksmith there. Yeah. Well, the boys used to see the, the blacksmiths, and would have chatted away there, uh -huh. round the corner. To he or inside the know. forge with a bit of heat and a cold mm. night. He was arrested. Uh. Because he was seen associating with these ones. Yes, I know. I went to go on him, but he wasn't. Robert Johnson's son was arrested. Ah, he had not been arrested. He was only sentenced on numerous others. Of course, I wanted to get some uh, vengeance on his old father, oh, anyhow. Was, uh, the main reason, I would say. Ah. But uh, when these ones came back, I got interested to them. Pure sure curiosity, I mean, to know what went on at the commission. Yeah. yeah. And I heard number 10, 20 or more accounts of what happened to these individuals. Yeah. And I found through all of them, mm -hmm. through all of them, they weren't a bit interested in the fellow they were talking to. No. 
Of what he did. But if it's somebody else. Especially. Aye. As a means of getting. Particularly the leaders. Yeah. And the West Nettles put straight. If any of them knew the leaders. Yeah. Any of the men said, admitted they knew them. I mean, yeah. you could admit you knew a man. They'd been his follower, you see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you, as a volunteer, know mm -hmm. you were going to fight? Yes. Well, you didn't know. Yes. And they seemed to be impressed with that. Many, many got that one question. Yes. Well, in other words, the leaders were a bit of a blackguard even in their own country. I know. They were leading young men into to be killed. Yes. You see, <laughs> there must have been some Catholics amongst the commission. There was a new day. The young Catholic, he was going to fight, he would get confession first. Yes. And there was no opportunity to give to these men. No. When I was having led into hell's places, you know. Yes, I know. Well, that was, seemed to be the main thing. Now, that's where they would take a jump. They were still going and coming, train loads and back and forth. Yes. Yeah. And then describing the grand raid they had across London on the top of a bus. They went right from Prongoff to London. They went from Prongoff to London by train. I see. And then bus, buses met them at, I suppose, the northwestern I corner of London. I see, And brought yeah. them to Wormwood's clubs or... or oh, I, where this commission where was sitting. Where the commission was sitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, each of them was kept at least three days there. Yes. Usually raised at night, that didn't count. And then through the day, the commission would hold on them and then the next day they would finish off tail off them in the morning and send them home in the evening. I know. That was the usual detour in me. So, we then, our group got together of the, the non-conformers. Yes, the northern non-conformers. said, we're missing all the phone. Uh-huh. Do you see? Uh -huh. And some of them would call us and say, I think we should fill in the forms. Mm -hmm. uh, to get us a, a trip to London. Yes. I don't know nothing this year. Uh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <coughs> but <coughs> I was taken from ground the viewpoint of filling an in at all, even to get an on. I know. Until somebody tipped me off. Just sign the form. Say I want to pay the whole commission. Don't make fees or don't fill in all those other no. stuff. Much to say take me if you like. Yeah. You don't think good places. Yeah. I just signed the thing and put it in. And it worked. Yeah. Well, was, they were bringing everybody yes. to get to come. And this filling in the form of the appeal. Wasn't, the hat. wasn't any appeal for mercy no. at all, no. Uh, it wasn't even necessary for me to hear it. Yes. And I, I said, oh, I know one thing I'll do. I know and tell them any damn thing I want to get myself. Yes. As far as my ideas were concerned. But if they ask anybody else, even somebody that knew, I knew, I don't know, you ah. see. And I was just going to show that much to the fans. Yes. Uh, so happened in front of us. He made have been 20 away from me, so happened he was in front of me just immediately. But I... And uh, we were lined up under a military yard in the corridor leading to the... Commission. And I noticed he was quite a long time. We had been sitting there waiting on others come and go. And they were out in maybe five or ten minutes, most of them. Yes. And he was still there. And I had to make it long so you were after you found out. I want to know who was married, of course he was married. You see, how yeah. many children I had he, and he counted them out to I was fourteen. Mm -hmm. he, well, you were in the volunteers. Yes, I was in the Irish volunteer. Well, uh, what part did you take in the fighting in Easter Week? I took no part because I didn't get a chance. Yes. Right? <coughs> You're not, you know, the, we didn't ask you did you get a chance or not. Yeah. We want to know where you in that fight. Ah. I wasn't in it because I didn't get a chance. Yes. And that's what most of the time was spent on. Yes. Trying to browbeat him down to say, that, to leave out he didn't get a chance. Yes. Because they wanted to know that he, <coughs> he did. He was caught in that. See? Yes, I know what I see. Oh, he was caught a little bit, you see. Yes. <laughs> he came out uh, stubborn and aged, you see, as far as he was concerned. I know, yes. 
Now I went in, that was my first view of the thing we went in, and the table, but there were uh, rows of went in practically in the shape of a horseshoe. Yes. See that man down here was yeah. the open part of the horseshoe. I know that. The open part, but as wide as this. Yeah. <coughs> Wider. <coughs> it seemed to be <coughs> about 50, mm. sitting all around on the floor, like on the on floor level. And floor level. And yeah. up there, about as high up as that looking glass, yeah. sitting a number of the judges. Yes. And the and barristers. Yes. And uh, some of the ministers of the Crown. Yes. We got the name of the judge because it was published, but forget it now. Yeah. And I walked in, you see, and there I saw the place, you see. Mm -hmm. No, soldier. Soldier was there, okay. let me in. Yeah. You stand over there, you see. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I looked, and I found it, where he found it, right in the middle of the two legs of the horseshoe. Yes, I know. And all these others sitting around. Yes. <laughs> I saw that. I was going to stand there like a prisoner. Yes. Yeah. And I looked over at that side, it just so happened for and there were two spaces from end was a vacant chair. Yes. I walked around behind two men, <laughs> lifted the chair and brought it around here. Where you were to stand? I sat down at an end did this. Folded your arms? Yeah. <coughs> I think it was holding my arms. It spoiled me. I felt right. When I did that movement of the chair, the old boy, the presiding judge, cut out. <laughs> Uh, Muttering. Muttering something. You got a hair like this. Uh, that. But it's too far away to hear anything. <coughs> Patently they were talking about this. No, they were talking about this. They were. This brat, you see. Uh. The mere attitude is not to know what he's. He feels at home and he's going to call us if he can. But yes, he won't. Yes. <laughs> Did the associate I wanted you with a man previously? Your father. Well, they did, though, that was known. Ah, that see, yeah. I, <laughs> I suppose that was helped. That was <laughs> made it more angry, yeah. yeah. So, he was a, as a hero being arrested and yes. bleeding and dying from a country. <laughs> suffering, what did you call it? Gin your body, but ah, couldn't gin exactly your soul like, like the camel. Rest, but I, <laughs> and they asked me, are many brothers and sisters? Yes. Did they not tell you to get back and stand? No. That amazing. They must have known that I wouldn't have done it. Yes, I see. They must have it up. It would take six of them to move me off my chair. Uh, to make you stand, you wouldn't have stood. Uh, I just thought about it. Uh, I'd stand like a wee guilty prisoner. I know. You know. But you weren't. And I wanted to was as good as any of them. Yes. You wouldn't mean, but that was all. They asked me, I don't want to know what my history is of all the here. Brilliant yeah. things I hadn't done and so on. Mm -hmm. Many brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I, I hadn't known that Grant had been asked that yes, before. Yeah. <laughs> he was brought out there. Oh, and right, away from me. Oh, yeah. yes, but no communicating until he got out. And when I was asked how many brothers and sisters I had, I said, I have a need a count. Yes. And then they kicked my pants. Yes. The old judge sent him and said, you needn't bother, you can go now. Oh, you were deflated then. Deflated? <laughs> mad or not? You were mad. I got up to you see and uh, went over and put the chair back again. Like, not uh, like trying to hide the feeling. Yeah. But man, I went, oh, God. When I did it to the corner, I stopped the yard. I was way down the corner and stopped the yard. Here, take me back in there. Yeah. Uh, Oh no, Mr. Can you go back in there? I went back with someone to tell him. No. I couldn't prevail on him. No. I want to get back in the tell him, Mr. Turner, that opposed which I didn't want to do. But oh. You were deflated. <laughs> deflated like a worm. Yes. If I had gone in quietly in the ordinary way and stood in ground and asked a question like that, yes. I would have said, those fellows are trying to be friendly. I know. If you ask him a question, it doesn't matter much, and then send yeah. me out. You see, I would have got the impression that they made the thought, well, here's a father and a son both away from home. Uh, uh, maybe we should let one of them come back. Yes. And they were picking me to go back, you know. Yeah. I might have had some charitable thoughts. Oh, yeah. But now it was just other things. Boy, they fairly hoist you with your own petard. 
Feeling it is me old fantasy. I know. Me wee bit of a college is like that, I was supposed to have to do. Look at the those men's lives. Yeah. We're steeped in this sort of thing. I know. Judging ah. character and that all the time. I know. Do you see, of witnesses and everything else. Yeah. And courts, do you see, and that's the way it became. That they could see things. It was a, a dark lantern. Ah. But oh, I never could get it done fast enough. And then I was locked in the cell. Yeah. And I pretty it looked like a cage rat. Up and down the cell, up and down the cell, and what way could get me on back? Could see no way. So then some sense came to me. You accepted it. It's too late now. It's you accepted the thing. Right. Well, finish your tea now, and then we'll get ready to go away. All right, we can knock off. Yeah. And brought in the specials. And she nearly 
had a difficulty with the stand. There you go. They don't they didn't know so much as they know now. No, I know, yeah. The lady's taken away and she died the very next day. She did? Well, it was yes, but I'm sure thought, Paddy's still on their own, I suppose. Oh, uh, well, not quite. Like, he was he was in Dublin. He was down in... Uh, no, no, but he couldn't attend the funeral. Uh, right. Oh, in Dublin. Uh, he was in Dublin at this time. Uh-huh. Oh, he did. He was able to attend the funeral, but he was in a desperate state. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> it was when Minnie was alive that Seamus' aunt gave them the pub. Paddy was running it. Oh, I know, yeah. And they had two, so they gave one to him. And Minnie was only a year old when they met this girl um, down there somewhere mm-hmm. and got married. Yeah. Well, Annie was mad. Oh, she mad uh, so quickly. Uh, so quickly. She, he thought that she yeah, thought that if he had. He was he lamented so much about her her death. Oh, babe, because they, they, couldn't, they couldn't get over it. Mm-hmm. And he was doing the nine years with this girl six months after she died. Beautiful. Well, Annie could never get over it, and Annie never spoke to her. And uh, he's been, he's been, he was always very great with me. Mm-hmm. And Seamus and myself would visit him with Annie and Nedra. Oh, to the floor down for him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, she thought like he, Minnie had gone through so much. That's true, yes, him, I know. Him being in prison, but she yes, lost I know, Yes, I know, yes, I know, yes. No, well, you never had any baby boys dead, no? No. Yeah. No, many a time I thought I'd love to have had a boy. Oh, it would have been great. Just the same as Daddy, but God's will. I know, it's God's will, have to be Good. Well, with all the activities, I don't know how either Paddy was looking for Seamus had time to do their courting. <laughs> oh, but the many that. But of course I was in the mood all the time with him. I know, but you were in Belfast. Right? And yes, I was in Belfast. Remember you said you did nurse nursing on the well, pre- yeah. on the pretense that yes, you were about to have them. Well, you were yeah. before mm-hmm. the rebellion. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. then you still around on Lowy. Oh yeah. Well, oh no. From I went to Belfast to to Dublin. We never went back, only on holidays. I'm not speaking about that. The time you so were well, yeah. the time you were a wooey. Oh, that's right, sure. We Lord, said the Lord. I don't know how many times I gave him up and I nearly lost his reason. <laughs> yeah, but that'll be right on where you were there. Oh, yeah. You were out at um, business in Belfast afterwards. But, uh, he... But you went about fast early in that, did you? Oh, I did, but 16. To an aunt there? Mm-hmm. Yes, no, I married his sister. I see. And what was your ambition to become that then? Well, I really would have loved nursing. Yeah. But me knew this was coming sometime or another. But what year did you go to Belfast? I went. I'm not like you, I can't remember. 1913, maybe? Ah, 14. Before the 14 war, was it? Yeah. You were only about 18 when you were training. Yeah, that's so. The idea. Yeah, exactly. But then I would have been 18 and 15, mm-hmm. would they? Because the Britain was... We were all full of... And of course, so were all our people at home. I know. The very neat anthem people. Yeah. You'll hear of Hugh Neat Anthem. Yeah. And all of the family were in it, just to the hilt, as they talk about. I know, and, and, and the movement, all yeah. All the campers. And he was great. He was great. He was one of the leading lights up there. Yeah. Well then you met Seamus, where did you meet Seamus first? I met him in the first and he did leave. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. So they, they, it must must have been very difficult for boys and girls Hmm. to meet each other at all with a boy being on their own. Oh, it must have been. You would have to just watch for them here and there. Yeah. Well, were there any ladies arrested during the trouble at that time? Well, the only one was the ones that were well known, like uh, Madame McBride, of course, was, she used to come very often yeah. to Belfast. And she was a suspect. Mm-hmm. Brady of Fars was my dad. Yeah. We talked about Gaynor, is he the teacher one? 
He was trained as a machinist. He's still alive. I know he's still alive. He lives only around the corner from us. That's right. And some of the other chaps that have some things, but... Is he Liam Gaynor? Liam Gaynor, that's right. Well, that's the one that was born in Egypt. Mm. And, oh, uh, the memory as you have. Yeah. Mm. No, Liam Gaynor's from that character. And then he spoke about now, Denny McCullough. Denny McCullough, of course, he was the leader in 1960. Yeah. He's now the baby. Is that right? Mm. That's his one. That's my Dr. Ryan's sister. Oh, I see. She was a professor of English in St. Mary's Training College in Belfast. That's yeah. where we met her. Yeah. And the blue coming into common the man. Oh, my, the common man right? my sister was the secretary. Yeah. You can come the man. Mm -hmm. And then we all had to, we drilled and all. Mm -hmm. We were able to, to shoot. Oh, yeah. We went on a Sunday morning up to Willowfield and we were all the, the what they, they called the nursing. Yeah, I'm right. to be, yeah. They had to learn to shoot. Oh, so we were out for months. Mm -hmm. Well, it's well appeased by the man to have two words. Yes, the great great was the man who taught us. And then they in turn... Who's this your instructor was? He can't be going to... Well, there was um, Sean O'Neill. He had been in the British Army. And his story was he ran away from home somewhere he had with his father. Yes. He ran away from home. And, of course, once he joined the British Army, he had to stay in. All right. But I don't know at what stage he came home, but <coughs> he was one of our leaders then because he knew so much about the, the army life. Yeah. And uh, he died, in, he was in the army in Dublin, but he died only a few years ago. Was he a native of Belfast? Of course he, he was. was. Mm. Well, then he took down a little bit. Hearn, what's his Hearn's first name? Sam Hearn. Sam Hearn, the yeah. of the island. Mm. Now, where's this this wee house, wee shop was? Well, he was. There was two two of them had shops in Liver Street. I see. And they used to meet to have meetings upstairs there. Oh, aye. Yeah. Well, Sam had only two rooms. That was a wee small place. The front and the back room. But it's amazing the material that was in those people that had nearly nothing. Yes, I know, yes. That's yeah. not the people that have been reared in the height of grand and all why. that you get the good stuff from. No. Well, the arms were taken away, the memory told us away today, it is from Coal Island, mm -hmm. in preparation for the insurrection. Mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were sat off the Gunny to Saturday. Mm -hmm. well, actually, Liam we're Gaynor, and who's this with them? Liam Gaynor and Anne. And Sean O'Neill. Uh, and Frank Cromit. Uh, and um, Denny McCullough, of course. Yes, Denny was and a colonel. Yes, yeah. Sean, or Seamus McKenna. Yes. And he was, uh, he was a very young, he was only in the Fianna. Yes. And I'll tell you a story that's interesting. There, were, <clears throat> there was a big search on Raglan Street. I should still tell you first of all, but not going to detail about that. We were chased by the Tom and the Man. Tom and the Man. Ah. And we lived with a married sister and her husband. Yeah. And they got to know, this is now on the Armour Road, you yeah. belong to Holy Rosary, if you're Annie Tubman. Yes, I know. Yeah, Holy Rosary. And <coughs> my brother-in-law was an AOH man. Yes. And we were afraid to talk too much before him. But as it turned out, it had done anything under heaven for Seamus. Yes. So <coughs> when the problem began, there was one night we were just after finishing the rosary. And a big thundering knock came to the door, and curfew was on. Yes. And Frank got very scared. He was white as a ghost. Frank who? My brother-in-law. What's his name? Frank McGarry. Oh, yes. He only died about six months was ago. Was he any kind of Sean McGarry? No, no. Oh, no, right. no this, is, this is Belfast. Oh, aye. So he opened the door, yeah. and it was a mob found me. Told us, every one of us, to get out to so and so. so they yeah. gave us five minutes. Well, and we began to around. argue the point. Oh yes, mm -hmm. he began to argue the point. There was just another sister of mine, and my my, my own, the married sister and her husband. Uh. And he wouldn't. He kept 
the, the, his hand on the door, wouldn't let, let Frank close it. So Frank says, how are we going to go out and curfew from 12 into 5? And, it's now half and they were all out. Right they night. were all out. So he said, I don't care where you go to, but out of this house you, you must go and I'll put you out. Yeah. They didn't let us go upstairs to take any belongings with us. We just, there was a hall stand we put on our coats. Yeah. And put us out on the very streets. That rain. Pouring rain. Oh, one of these lambs floats. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> we got out. We didn't know under God what we'd do. We each had our, our rotary in our hands. Yeah. We walked up to the end of the street and there were crowds of orange men up there, in spite of the fact that... The were they armed or uniformed? Were or we just an old? Oh, no, no, not with orange men. We knew that they weren't Catholics because where we lived, Holy Rosary, as you know, isn't a Catholic district. No. And there was an old cabbie man coming down and Frank caught it up his hand at him. And he came and over to say, I'll give you a five pound note if you take me to a Catholic district. Take us. So we, was he then out of curfew We never could tell that, yeah. how he was out whether it was that he maybe was taking a Protestant family up uh, to the Protestant area. Uh, so we were afraid we'd get in and immediately we got into the old cabin. A shot was fired through the window. Yeah. And we all had to lie down in the bottom of the cab to pretend there was nobody in it. And uh -huh. they took us all the byways. And in the distance we could hear the armoured cars. And uh, he had to hide uh, yeah. He had to hide from the armoured cars. Was this a motor cab or a Horse no, cab. the ordinary horse cab. That's all right. Yeah, well. Well, he had to go from Holy Rosary right over to the Falls Road to a aunt's house, Frank's aunt's house. Yes. And she wasn't very long dead, but he had a sister living in this little house beside St. Peter's. Yeah. So we knocked the door, mm -hmm. and Sally wouldn't open the door. So we had to shout up to her to, for heaven's sake, open the door. We are chased out of our home, yeah. and she came down, running down in her night attire and let us in. We went inside that door and we heard the most awful shooting in the very road where we had gone to, that was Ratna Road. Yes. R Raglan, Raglan, Raglan Street. Street. Ah. So we began the rotary in the back room, <coughs> downstairs, yeah. and didn't put on a light. We were afraid of maybe somebody smacking us on the light, thinking maybe there was a meeting. Oh, I know, yes, yes, yes. Because the headquarters of the IRA was in um, a house at the bottom of that street where there was a school. Cooper Street, no? No, no, the same Raglan Street. Oh, Raglan Street, there was an IRA headquarters there, And too. at the end of that was Frank Crummy, who yes. was a teacher and taught in a school in Raglan Street. Yeah. And the meetings were all held, held there. <clears throat> so until five in the morning, we never stopped seeing the rosary, for it was shooting, uh. the most awful shooting, the whole night, and we Over were by the Omaru side. side. Uh. No, no, in Raglan Street. I that see. was the Catholic district. They were getting everybody. Every, we, we, it was only in the morning when we heard what was about to happen. What did happen? After five, they killed four IRA men in that very street. Who were they on? I forget the names just now. She must make remember them. But when Frank opened the door, there was a man's head over the curb, a few doors. Well, Frank went back in the morning. Uh, no, we stayed there all night until you. Oh, but oh, there was a man's head on your door in, in the Falls District now. On the Falls District, in the Catholic Street. But what kind of a head? His whole head. And no body? Yes, no body. And whose was the head? <laughs> no, I, I've forgotten that, it's strange to say, but we'll come back to that. Seamus might remember. So he came in and we had a cup of tea and we were afraid to know what had happened fearing it would be somebody that yes, we knew, knew well. well. And it so happened that they made mistakes. Yes. There was they went into houses. In Raglan and Street. And Raglan Street and just shot anything and everything that came their way. Young fellows. Yes. Well then there was a meeting of the IRA that night. Yes. And they arranged at the meeting that they'd go around all houses and if a massacre started like that, yes. that they were to take empty their bins. Yes. And begin the noise. Uh, if they come in, supposing they've been to a house where there's a whole lot. Yes. One member of that family was to go out and rattle the bin in the yard. The next house was to take it up, yes. to scare them away from there. I just pass the signal and all the yes. attack. Huh? Well, you should have heard that. The din of? Ten, of, of bins. Ah, but that was after they had given them instructions. Yeah, after they gave them instructions. Yeah, but they get back to Raglan Street. You mm -hmm. said they made mistakes. I suppose they were looking they for They didn't Crummy. care who. They were looking for IRA. Oh, Crummy couldn't sleep in his own house at all. No. 
but they went out into any house where they thought there might be, uh -huh. and they didn't question it, just if there was a young man there that shoot them. And did they burn the houses, no? No, no, they didn't burn the houses. There were some of them burned, but not on that, not there. Not there, not three. Well, there's where we had to live. And for six months, we dare not go over to the other side of the city. I know where your furniture now is. And the there. next day, a Protestant family were put into our house. That was Frank McGarry's house. He was an AOH man, my brother. I know, and I'm sure. And, and your furniture and all there. All our furniture and belongings. Well, when eventually, when you got back in six months after, what did you well, think? Well, I'll tell you what, what, we had a very, very good neighbour, Mrs. O'Connor. A Protestant. Uh, Protestant. Uh. And when she uh, heard that she saw a van arriving with uh. furniture, a Protestant know. family, uh. she went in and she cried her eyes out. Her husband told us this. And she made him go out to the back yeah. before they could get in. Yes. And she, he opened the door. And she, with another member of our family and her husband, went in. Uh, they carried in everything they could carry out of our house into yeah, our house. Uh, there was beautiful eider, there was eider downs off the beds, uh, and linens, and maybe my sister. I suppose all the holy ob objects. Yes, yes. and uh, china, uh, everything, cutlery, and all that. Uh -huh. She brought it in, but then she didn't know where we were. No, I know. And we don't come back. And it was away anything from six to eight months before we dare go back and had a whole lot of trouble wondering would we be safe to go back. Yeah. And when we, she got back, it was to visit Mrs. Connor. Yes, yes. When Mrs. Connor got her in her arms and she went to the door and yeah. she told her the whole thing, what she had taken in. Do you know? Well, she'd been bits of furniture that she thought I like know. that they might maybe burn. Oh, sure, I know. She was a tremendous neighbour. I know. And we never got the house. It was quite a nice wee house. You never got back? Never got back. Well, then after that, Frank's uh, father died yeah. in Dunloy. Yeah. They were both had a tailoring business. I know, yeah. Frank had a business in Royal yeah. Avenue, uh -huh. but lived in uh -huh. uh, Raglan Road. Uh, Raglan Street? No, Raglan Road before that. Raglan Road and Raglan as well. Was. And you're now living Rutland, Rutland Street. Rutland well, Street. Rutland Street. No. Uh. And Raglan Street. Ru you remember that. Rutland uh. Street and Raglan Street. So his father had died and the f there was nobody there. Yeah. And he asked him to carry on his business in Dunloy. Yeah. He was delighted. Oh, I see. And he went to Dunloy and that's how, how Aunt Mary and Frank, uh, yeah. where they lived. And uh. we went then when the little house was very small for the family. We always went to them until she died. Oh, that's in Dunloy. In Dunloy. Well, then you remained <coughs> on in Belfast. Oh, we ma remained on there only for a short time. Then uh, I conceived the idea. I was in the linen business. You see. Yes, oh, I see. I was starting in Dublin, and Seamus couldn't get back to teaching. I see. Oh, this was in 23. Yes, 20. Oh, it was in 20. 22, anyway. 20, about. 20, we no, no, 21. 21. Uh, they were, the, the Dublins were told to get out of Dunleen. Yes, just um, late twenty one. That's right, and, and no, old, they came. Was, right. was Henry and was old Henry mm -hmm. down the time Billy Kindler? He was in Billy Kindler right up to they were uh, had come back from oh, the I north see. and were in Sutton. Uh -huh. It was a beautiful house, but it was very expensive for. I see. I remember you told me that last night. Mm -hmm. But who's was the man's head? I want that. I don't know. The man, he had a person, and the yeah. the, and where did they put that head there? I don't know. Well, it was he brought, they probably brought him out. We never heard what about the body where it happened. Where it well, that was in the falls, it. anyway. On the falls, you know Saint Peter's Church, Saint Peter's. Ah, but Saint Peter's Street was. You know Peter Saint Peter's Church. Yeah. Well, you could. It was just. Uh, Al, do you know Albert Street? Well, I know vaguely where it is. Well, it was the continuation of the street that Saint Peter's was on. Uh -huh. Like down, you come down Albert uh -huh. Street, and Saint Peter's was just round the corner of it. Uh -huh. Well, we lived straight up. What's the name of, the, of your relation that you went to from Raglan right, Street in a hurry? Uh, McGarry. Another Frank McGarry. Frank yes. Well, then, Father O'Neill was... That's the late Canon uh, The late Canon O'Neill was there, and of course I knew him well, uh -huh. being he was very fond of the Gaelic League. Yes. And it was he who started the Irish Citadel in St. Peter's. Yes. And he came in 
to oh, daily nerve for, for a while. He was very upset about the, the upset we had had. So we, all we could do was just to try and put up with it. It was a very tiny wee house, you know. Yeah, no. Just three bedrooms and there was a small, no. nice wee sitting room. And uh, Sally, Sally, that's Sally McGarry was Frank's sister. But she had a nice wee bit of furniture. Yeah, no. And we lived with her. Was that open and all your furniture oh, over you? Oh, don't be talking. And mm. uh, she and Mary kept it lovely. We called her Aunt Mary because the children called her Aunt Mary. Wouldn't you think it was possible, mm. surely, for people in some shape or form to get in the same city mm. over to where your home was? Couldn't get near it. No. We couldn't get it between six or eight months. Well, then uh, they began, oh, there was terrible activities all around that area right, from that on on account, of, yes, right. on account the vets and theaters right. on account of the meet different meeting houses yes now of ira of ira uh -huh. so there was one day i came home from business one saturday I'll never forget it and when i came in i used to do uh, carry all the dispatches for them you know yes and i should tell you this I tell you about that place been recording the ground. There was a big meeting on the Friday night in Crummy's house. Crummy at this time had come. No, Where he was, was he? Still, he was always there, but he was teaching. He still remained regnant. Oh he did. So I don't know it? how. I don't know how he escaped so well. And there used to be like men from Dublin would come and they would meet there. Aye. But uh, I think they went around different houses, you oh, know, not, really, not, yeah. not always in his own house. Mm. But this particular Friday night uh, they had a very important meeting, and it was the night before the um, Cavan ambush. Well, you know that. You heard about the Cavan ambush. Big ambush in Cavan. County Cavan. County Cavan. No, tell me about that. Well, it was where it was organised. There was to be a tremendous uh, ambush. Yes. And they had their big meeting, and they sent for me. They used to put a letter in the letter box. Yes. And the, all they say was, uh, no name, but just call tonight. Ah. And I went call tonight. I'd know that was to collect uh, dispatches. dispatches. And I knew where to call. Yes, to. I know. <coughs> so I arrived up that night at 11 and there was a whole room mm -hmm. for them. It happened to be in front of that night. Yes. The night before the ambush. And Sean O'Neill gave me a bundle of letters. Mm -hmm. And without them knowing a name, I knew a little fella who was in a tea train between Belfast and Dublin. And uh, a tea train. A tea he made teas on the train. Oh I see. And I, the tea I, train I, I, on oh, yes, the tea restaurant carriage. Car, yes. yes, the very thing. And I'd take that bundle of dispatches. Yes. And that train left every morning at nine o'clock. Yes. And I was able to collect the dispatches the night before and take them down before nine and that little fellow would meet me outside the station. Yes. I'd give him those dispatches. Do you know his name? I, I didn't know it for age. Uh, well, I knew it then, but ah. I, as soon as I think remembers it now, but right. I can't remember names. And you'd give him these? I'd give him those. Ah. And I wasn't to give the IRA his name. No, you see. no, I know. They just trusted me yeah, with I'd dispatches. Say yes or no, I... I'd give them to him. Yeah. And he'd deliver them at headquarters. Dear uh, and if they had anything else, they gave them to him, and I met him. And got the he never out. got near my house. No, I know. I'd meet him at the railway. Yes, I know, yeah. Time. And after meetings, yeah. they all knew, you see, that, 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 that were I wasn't to mention his name. Yeah, but the dispatches were yeah. coming and going, all right. But thanks be to God, I heard later that that lad, uh, they got to know him, and he got a nice job in Dublin. I'm glad The that. same lad. Yeah. Mm. Well, this night, I took the dispatches and Sean and he says to me, wait a minute or two, for I have a lot of ammunition that's to be collected tomorrow morning. Yes. And I want to leave it with you. Yes. And leave it out in the yard, not in the house. Yes. And I said to him, well, you better come up with it. And yes. it was big, heavy stuff, you know. I know why. It was all sorts of weblies and, and ammunition and everything. So Sean came up, and another man came up that night, mm -hmm. and Frank was out, he used to be fond of a game of cards. Yes. And they came right through the hall, out the back, without coming into the house yes, at all. Yes, I know why. And I 
I show them a place at the Howden Lee Yard to put it. Uh -huh. And he says, now, that's to be collected uh -huh. to, tomorrow. There's two days within the... The ambush time. Yeah, yeah. I'll collect it tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. as, an, uh, as far as I remember, it was on a Saturday evening. Or they wanted to be... To have it a certain distance. I don't I know what know, the yeah. ambush was. Ah. So he left it and went off home. And the following day, when I came up, I was coming down from, uh, in from business, the whole area around St. Peter's was cordoned off. With military? Every, with military. Military everywhere. Yes. And I knew what I had. And I knew it was to be collected at four o'clock. Yes. And this was half four. So you knew what you had in your home? In my not home. Your no, no, no. In the yard. In the yard. Yes. So you had to you had to take away the card and to let you where do you live? Ah. What's your name? Ah. What house? Ah. Well of course I had to give that. You had no dispatches oh. on you. Oh no, that no, was going in. Ah. No, I had no dispatches for that. Ah. But I went in. Ah. And Frank was I can see his big white face. Uh -huh. He says he's smoking his pipe at the door when ah. I come up to see him. I hope you haven't any in the house, Breed. Ah. And uh, Ah. And I just says, I have to say to Frank McGarry. Yeah. I he was so good to I me. I know I although he I'm wasn't in this house, at all. Ah. No, but he was good to them all the same. Ah. So I went in mm -hmm. and I waited for those two big things and I came out just to hand myself over to say to Frank, as it's true as it's it. You would have, aye. Right. And take I took out of the place. big parcels to see where the H are you going to? Ah. I never had to and I waited for these two big things. Ah. And it was two young soldiers, and I, of course I went over to them. I said, I'm in a hurry for the train, would you mind letting me pass? We're not supposed to let you pass with the, with the parcels. I said, please let me pass. I said, I'm in a hurry for the train. Well, run, run, he said. Ah. You believe my ears. Yes. When he said to run, when I got out, ah. to get out of sight of the, the of whole the court, car, nah. I didn't know where to go. Yeah. So I walked on and on, praying. And these big, heavy parts. Big, heavy parts that I could hardly uh, Look carry. Look I went over and went into St. Peter's. Yes. And I left them inside and let down. God direct me what I'm going to do. And here, as I went in, Father Lee was hearing confessions. Yes. And the place was full. Of Lord, oh. Of people. Ah. So I said, oh, what will I do? I can never wait to those people. Look, I was nearly ready to faint. I know you were with the exhaustion of the crowd. I went and knocked and knocked at the door. Ah. And he says, what's wrong with you, Breed? Uh -huh. What's your minute? Uh -huh. I nearly came out. Uh -huh. And he brought me right away up to the chapel. Brought me into the Parsons church. and all. Oh, no, no. Oh, I no. wanted to discuss that. Oh, with I know that. I sat down. I says, what is wrong with you? Now, don't talk for a minute or two. Rest yourself for a minute. I told him a story. Uh -huh. Where are they now? Told them about how successfully I'd yeah, got through the court. And huh? by s n just smiling and being nice to I them, and f let me through. I don't want to miss a train. He says, Where are they now? I said, They're just in the back of the church behind the statue. Yes. See, go you down. If you can get them up to me, I'll not move till you can bring them in. I went down and brought the two big parcels. Up the middle aisle. Right up the middle aisle. And I set, I set them down, he said, sit down now a minute or two. Don't talk for a minute or two. Wait. What is it? He says to me, what, what are the parcels? So I told him, I guess. I said, no, but the whole place has been cordoned. Well, I says, now what am I going to do? I said, when I come into the chapel. Yeah. He says, I leave them up on a spire. Yes. And he says, don't you worry anymore. You're like a ghost. Ah. So I wasn't content till I would see them. I said, this is an awful thing, you hearing confessions. So he says, well, I'll move, the, I'll move them from here to content you. Yes. And he says, kneel down there and say your prayers when ah. I went down. And I wouldn't leave that chapel till he came back to me to say the things were gone. Up in the town, inspired. inspired. When I prayed then, as I never prayed before, Yes. Home. You didn't go past there to soldier again. Oh no. I went took another way round. You would have to because you made Ragnar. Yes. 
I don't that, pass it. Yeah, I, 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 as far as I remember, I couldn't. I, I was going to go to the wind further down and have something to eat, but my stomach was just oh, up no. here. And I didn't go back for a Frida Frank. Yeah. I didn't go back for a long time. No. And until I saw the whole place was house yes. to house raid. Yes, I know. While I was in St. Peter's, our house was turned upside down. It was not a good job you had them away. Upside down. And they took from my room a bundle of letters I had had from different prisoners. Of course. Carol Shannon was one. They used to all write to me. Yeah. Carol was one. Seamus, of course, too. Right. But there was nobody, no definite person in my heart at that particular no, I know, time. No, no. We were great with them all and working with them all. Yes. And uh, they all wrote to me from prison. Of course, I sent them parcels and all that kind yeah. of thing. Well, everything that belonged to me in that room was taken away. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long it was before I thought I could face Frank. Uh -huh. And I found then when I went in, he was sorry for me uh -huh. to see that. What the hell had you them in the first? Uh -huh. And I told him. <laughs> oh, in the year. Uh -huh. However, you did something that nobody else would have done. That's true. And you got away with it. So that it was nothing but prayer saved me. Yeah. And I said, um, it was now half past four and I was worried about somebody calling to collect it. I had to know where it was going to be got now. where it was got. So John O'Neill came in and two other men. You didn't know that? Uh, oh, I did. These no. were the men at HQ. Oh, I see. And I, they were to collect it from me. These men were to collect it. Ah. But when I told them, it wasn't there. Ah. They nearly went sky high. Ah. They couldn't do anything without them. I know. Well, I said, now my mission's finished. Ah. I said, I saved that stuff. Yes. He would have lost. Ah. And he, uh, uh, his first impulse <coughs> was angry at having lost it. They'd have I know, yes. The train was somewhere about six and they'd be away without it. Mm -hmm. So I told him where it was. Mm -hmm. He thought down there when he knew. I wasn't going to, first of all, tell him. The escape that who had helped me out, uh, well, you know, I know, you know, I know. Like, uh, maybe uh, implicating uh, whether they would maybe say to somebody else, somebody else say Father O'Neill helped her out. Uh, Although he didn't see, he didn't care, he didn't, uh, he didn't say to me, don't mention my name. Yeah. However, they got it in time for the ambush and I had a gorgeous big leather case that we always used for going on holidays. So he said, could I lend them a case? Mm. Put the stuff in that it wouldn't look so, so obvious as, as parcels. I gave him the case. And from our house, he took Seamus' bicycle. Seamus had left, left his bicycle. Seamus was arrested at this time. You're Seamus. Seamus yeah, Dobbin. Seamus Dobbin. And they took that bicycle. Neither of us had ever saw him have a bicycle or the or case. Or the case. Well, uh, well and however they're going to bring this very real, themselves. They're going to bring this. Um, well, that was the only way then, a long journey like I that. Well, I they? don't know how they managed it. Seamus maybe could tell you the details because he. Um, like there must have been a cover somewhere in the train, like. Somewhere. There must have been some way, but that was the only way. Well, I wonder speak. then, to finish it, I wonder then we get our sweet or dessert. Oh, there's no hurry for it, Anna. Well, I wonder Jim's then, did the, the ambush take place? Oh, it did. It was one of the famous ambushes. Now, Seamus will tell well, you I all about that. that and Seamus McKenna now, who is well up in, in uh, Harris of the Servant and was a secret secretary of one of the ministers, he was um, one of the ones at that ambush. Yeah. And uh, it was there that he met Smith. You know, the minister for... Yes, uh, yes, Paddy Smith. Paddy Smith. And Paddy Smith is his best friend now and stays with him when he's in town. I see. But oh, you mean uh, James McKenna still lives in that now? still lives in Home Farm Road. Oh, Home Farm Road, Home Farm Road. Oh, nearly opposite us. Well, they're nearly all around there. Oh, and Ben Ryan's opposite us. That's Monsignor Ryan's brother, brother who's an IRA man. Yeah. Albert Cotton Street. We all those... Albert Cotton Street, uh, the non-Catholic one. The non-Catholic, you have terrific memory. Uh -huh. And uh, we all lived together. All those houses, new houses were built. I see, I remember it. And place. all the northern crowd. Uh, the third and northern crowd. The third north, exactly. All put down their names for houses. And At that time, right. Because was, they were nearly all back at that time. Exactly. So we're all living in those houses since. And uh, they probably were extra dated out of the country at the same time. Well, there were, there's a whole lot of them, mind you, got wet feet. Uh, so and suppose. sort of left things. Uh, you know, it takes a strong, strong character. Yes, I know. To to withstand uh, all they went through, uh, and to not 
want to get into a circle where they'd have things plenty easier money. and plenty of money. I know. There was a whole lot, that's quite, that's the only reason why a whole lot of them went free state. Yes, it's that would be cushier for them. Aye. I'll never forget the day that the, uh, uh, the signing of the, of the um, treaty. treaty and she, I don't know where Seamus was at that particular time. Yeah. But we were all sitting at our tea one evening. Yeah. Knock came to the door. Granda, did you ever know Granda? I've seen Grand. I've seen their old he and red open. Yeah. Fine, big. Oh, a big person. Good looking. It's not yeah. one of them as good looking as he was. Right. Aye, well. Or uh, as uh, such good speakers. Yes. He was. A, a, he was. There's no doubt about it. He just stood on any platform. He was an orator. Like he was a complete orator. But the knock came to the door, and uh, Frank answered it. Is Breed in? Aye. I heard my voice. My yeah. name, the ah. voice saying Breed, and I got up. Walks in with this big hawthorn stick. Like, oh, I remember the famous uh, one that was yeah. carved out on <laughs> vinegar. <laughs> yeah, the very one. Yeah. So he sat down in a lovely beard. Yeah. I just, uh, I said, oh, sit down. And uh, before he sat down, he felt he could talk better standing. I just want to know, do you know the whereabouts of this son of mine? Seamus. Ah. He didn't like him called Jim. No, I he know. He called him Seamus. Ah. And uh, I don't know where Seamus was just then. Seamus, huh? Ah. Uh, I said I couldn't tell him. Well, the only thing that's troubling me, he was on the run, you know, but I hadn't seen him for quite a while. Uh -huh. The only thing that's troubling me now is for fear he took any act or part and the signing of this treaty yeah. where he went over the road uh, he would disown him if he did yeah the thing was all wrong I know. he pointed out where it was wrong so Seamus turned up i think in a couple of days afterwards but he was satisfied that daddy wasn't on the wrong side yeah. but whatever um, treatment yeah you could, uh, i see it but no oh, stay of course mm -hmm. you say huh? No well, I thought maybe it was the kitchen. No, no, no. Well, uh, <laughs> that was a good, but that was the pogrom, all right. Oh yeah. I remember Seamus like the other night saying that they had heard that the Unionists, the Orange men, were going to cause some sort of sectarian pogrom or aid mm. force. Right? Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, they were. Yeah, this plan. Mm. They were going to get something going. So that, that, where did it start first? One of the regiments you told me, one of the areas. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, do you know, uh, Seamus has it in writing, I think, somewhere. And I, if I can find it, you'll get it. Yeah, well, this history that he You're has. You're a whole lot younger than Seamus. Yes. And. Uh, It'll be lost if it's not. Well, I, I, I find out, find out where, the, where we can. There's one big box that I made of something. In. Yes. But you know when you're doing up a house now and again, uh, things get lost. Things get lost. Mm -hmm. But he, of course, he's very good memory too. He has a great memory mm -hmm. indeed. Not bad. No, he has. Yeah, he was doing over there. No, I haven't. But they tell you what, you take your own soup spoon and I take yeah, that, this one. Yeah, that'll do. And that'll do as well. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. But I was terribly fond of Granda. Well, the, the um, granny, of course, was quieter mm -hmm. than uh, Matt and Brando. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. well, he was a real fighter. Oh, they must have considered him a real one when they told him to get out of this kind of time. Never. He never did a time. Of course, many times I think, like all the others, yeah. that weren't even as well off as they were in the beginning. Mm. They've all big jobs. got big jobs and beautiful things. Mm. And mind you, they have had some struggle. Oh, I know. You know, to hold on. And new people had the struggle mm. to in order for you to keep old Henry Dobbin then and the rest of the family. Nothing. 
And then of course Seamus went, that was really the reason why I Seamus was planning to get married. And that was so in no sense. And then of course I did what a whole lot of other girls wouldn't have done. Mm-hmm. I saw that there was I may have been waiting for God knows. I right. know. So I just had to fill the shins at the go and get a house and read the thing and then uh-huh. pull out them. Not one of them doing anything. And that's the truth. And so Seamus only one as a teacher earning then, mm-hmm. and that's what could. Yeah. Well, did Seamus get a pension eventually, or did he accept the pension? There's no pension on these teachers. I could imagine that he wouldn't accept yes. the pension, probably. Well, there was a, a whole, well, of course, uh, he, uh, um, he ca- can't receive two pensions, but he never discussed a IRA pension, whether he... He may, he may, he may <coughs> never have sought one, you see, if he's so principled. Mm-hmm. He would hardly take an IRA pension, although he should have got a very there's, big one. There's no, there's no, oh, he should have Because had. he was in the IRB I, and I he was in the I know, he was in everything. Uh, and there's one thing that bothered him a whole lot. He didn't mention it, you should have heard him coming in on it. There was one whose name he never mentioned, but I heard to you, or to anybody, uh. that lost his religion altogether. Yeah. Over a priest that fought with him. Uh, I wouldn't give him absolution yeah. when they were going on big stunts. They I called know. these stunts, you know. I know why. And he had gone to separate priests and couldn't get, mm-hmm. wouldn't, he wouldn't get to, they all went to confession, you know. I know they would, yes. I guess you must say he made a general confession before they went on. During Denny Bridge, Bridge was telling me about the time they were hunted out of Raglan Street. And she said that out whenever they did a bit. Up there on the road or something. It wasn't it right? It was. It went to Raglan Street, which is near St. Peter's Church. Oh, then it was Rutland Street that's was the they were hunted from. Rutland, that's right. Ah, she said that, and uh, whenever they woke up in the morning, there was a, there was a head of a man outside the door. So, wonder who's that head of? No, was. I never heard. I, I wasn't there, did she? Well, was, um, was it a species of warning to them? Oh, not necessarily, no. No. The whole street was a, 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 a rebel according to them. Aye, Rutland Street, I, eh? I, No, Raglan Street. Raglan Street, sorry. No, there were hardly, there were hardly any Catholics in Rutland. It was up to Ormond Road. Oh, I she told me that a Frank Crummer mm. used to teach up there. No, indeed. Well, he's connected to Raglan Street now. Raglan Street. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say, I'm going to get mixed up in it. Rutland Street was breathed in there. Sisters lived for a good lot of years. It was up near, well not quite near, but up near the Holy Rosary Chapel. Yeah. Up there or near Agincourt at Emley. Yeah. Or above the gas works. Uh-huh. Any of those places. That was an Orm Moe Road. Oh yeah. The street, Rutland Street, ran from the Orm Road to the brink of the Lagan River. Oh yes. Yeah, sure. That was a cousin. Oh aye. Yeah. It was from there they were directly yeah, asked to go, yes. Oh, very, very oh, unceremoniously yes, they asked uh, to go. They, and they went, the uh, Frank, that was the husband of Mary Ann, mm-hmm. the eldest sister. Frank's sister yeah. had this house up in Ragnarok Street. Yeah. Convenient to her work in some way. And that was near St. Peter, you know, Albert Street. Yes. Well, it's just runs up Albert mm. Street over to Barrack Albert Street or something. Oh, I, I was wondering, whenever she said that a Frank Crummy was teaching, and uh, she thought down below, and I said, I wonder that they didn't haunt him too, but it was he was teaching up in Raglan Street. He was teaching there. in Raglan Street there, yeah. Well, then, Seamus, was this in part in connection with what we discussed the other night, which I didn't hear, about a real thought-out clan. You started off by saying that you were telling about how the boys stoned you when you were coming back as a monitor. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And then I oh, said, that was a way, way before. Well, granted, but it, it brought up that actually the orange men are not as brave in a sense. Oh, yes, I did. Because yeah. they're not really fighting for nationalism. Mm-hmm. So then you said that there was really, as far as you could gather, you men, that there was a well thought out plan. And then you explained to me that when there's this a time right. of depression or something, or not, not a depression, they, they wanted. They wanted to show that this was not sectarian, the riots they envisaged. They were going to oh, stage they were going to stage some event if you people didn't do it. That's right. 
But if you had to massacre and then hunt, you'd have to raise them. Raise them their wrath. Aye, that's it. That was the wording, you see. Yes, that was it. They would declare to the world that these fellas had done just overstepped at this time. Yes. <laughs> that would be an holy anger, like. Why? <laughs> 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 But maybe it was the blame for it, you know. Yeah, no wonder. They wouldn't have known all our crime. No. But they seemed to know where they lived and they seemed to know not to attack those houses. I yes, where they are, they I was in Nigel Court, haven't you? Yes. You see? Which is down off the Ormo. Which is, I would uh, say, up off the Ormo. Yes, aye. Uh, Regnan's the Ormo Road there. Mm -hmm. Regnan Street there, and a wee bit on my Nigel Court, I'm a big way in Tranky Place. Yes. And when they did come into that room, into that house it was, when people did they knew I wasn't there and I had done a bit of thinking of telling you. Oh, I know, you know. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. they went to the landlady, he was a dumb man there. Yes. And her husband was a Protestant. Yes. Also a Dublin man. Yes. He and she had been praying for him and nearly two of for many years. The three little girls, beautiful wee kids. Yeah. Uh, to become a Catholic. Yes. And he wouldn't be thought as one of the reasons he was a Catholic. Anyway. Yes. And then we were out walking on the island. Yes. An engineer, like a superior engineer. Yes, I had Bora had it one. Aye, he wasn't a riveter or anything like that. Yeah. And he was amongst his own. Down yes, the I know, yes. Seat. But uh, he was cured mm -hmm. very rapidly by the problem. Is that right? Oh yes, it's cured overnight. He saw a few things he saw in one evening. It seemed yes. not a lot of things, but these were close enough, what he called his own shop. You know? Yes. And he declared to the way to, well, tell him, how did you become a papist? Ah. And she, her knowledge at the time was... Limited. Ardoin. Ardoin, ah. Eh? Ardoin. She was Dublin too, but she knew about the Ardoin men. Yes. They rang a bell somewhere in Dublin for her, do you see? Yes. And she got him and uh, introduced him to a priest and told him the position, do you see? And the priest took him home. <laughs> About three weeks he was baptized because he was just full of getting into it. He was. Or getting into the other thing. You know? What was his name, Seamus? We can know that too. Uh, uh, but the, you. I'm going to say it there. Uh, this was in 1921. And he went during the program and talking about him. Ah. And a, a deputation of about seven went into that house yes. to talk to her. At uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Yes. And told her that they heard I was there. Yes. And they knew I was there because I spoke about that they had seen me, do you see? Yes. <coughs> and better get rid of me. Yes. And she was a brave girl, it must have been an old man. Yeah. No good talking to me. I'm not one for him. Come yes. when he's here. Yes. You're not afraid of him, she said. You were already there? No. She said to them to come ah. and I would be there. Oh, quite. Ah. But you're not afraid of him. Yeah. No, just ah. a wee bit of room. Ah. But yeah. But they didn't come. That was a funny thing. Uh -huh. But neither did I go. I didn't see any sin. Now it attracted me down. I said, wouldn't be she because of the order, of course. Maybe two or three dozen of those would come and you wouldn't have a Wouldn't have a chance, chance to do Where did you choose to go there to stay, rather than in a nationalist area? On the Road, do you see? The British authorities had all the time to say that I only meant to live on the Falls Road. Oh, they had a right to... Ah. No, they lived nowhere else in town. Yes. <laughs> quite a number of men over in Bellamy Carrot and around there. And not one of their houses was touched. I see. Do you see? Now, Uh, you, uh, you were saying that there seemed to be a well, <coughs> a well, a ready plan, that if the IRA didn't strike, <coughs> yes, before a certain date, there seemed to be a date around the twelfth. Uh, well, after the twelfth. Yes. The date was, and it was, where they would strike. They had apparently, and don't ask me what we couldn't get at what was ready. So no, I know. Something was ready, do you see? Yes. And. Uh, for this assault on the baby system. Yes. And, and, and called the IRA, you see. No, I baby, blame them. Baby yeah. for herbs, you see. Yes, I know. Now, that 
the only saint we saw of that clan on, on their side of putting yeah. something in our way. We also, I told you about that, we had four other things, including swans. The killing of swans. Uh, the, that was all on the part of our planned operations, yeah. waiting on sanction. Yes. Now, any one of those would have been a good lead for the other side. I know, yes. And that's what Dick McGuire yeah. gave me in writing. Do I cancel those on Phil after a certain date? Oh, I remember, he, yes. Ah. I told you he couldn't. He couldn't promise me any guns. No. He, he offered me men, and I said we had plenty of men who knew the terrain. Yes. And that it would be a mistake to bring Dublin men. Of course, yeah. They had been lost. See, they wouldn't know the topography of the city, and their accents would be wrong. So. Well, you thought oh, that there was I some plan. That, no, I didn't think it. That was part of our information that there was a plan. Oh, there was. Uh, but yes, our uh, intelligence service had got the thing from some head from orange man. Some head orange man, you yes. see. And it gave me a couple of sources, uh, hints. And yes. then when we got the hints, go back in and find out something definite. You see. So you're going to lie low and not, not become agent provocateur. That's a big word. That's the very one I, I couldn't say. It. Ah. That's just what it was. Yes. Really they wished you to be the agent yeah, that's provocateur. Right, you so then well, you... Our, our stunts, we'll call them, yes. were going on from time to time in ordinary course. Yes. You see, uh -huh. maybe you made only one, one a week and maybe, maybe one a fortnight, depending. Yes, right? yes. Because usually after you had one... You had to uh, get out of the road for a while and lay yes. low, you know. ah, And then we grew. And then I remember it was the same gun for fighting in Monaghan. Yes. And in Calvin. And in Lowe. And in North Antrim. Uh, all over the and North had to be brought the same in there. Same guns were brought back and forth from one group yeah. to the other. But so how, how were they brought, Seamus, without being caught? Like, were they brought over uh, by night? By night and all the other rapists were brought. They've been dismembered. That's not the word. I know, I've been dis dismantled. dismantled, yes. <laughs> and brought uh, mm. in a parcel, for instance. No, really, parcel. I know, yes. Uh, I know. And then there's well, then you, you were short of ammunition and guns. I remember you telling me that you had lots of men, but not uh, enough stuff. Yes, and that was the same story all over. Indeed, I suppose it was. You see. Uh. But we thought our, our situation was so desperate that headquarters would help us out with it. Yes. Stop, you yeah. see. But then, as Dick pointed out, they, 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 they make, and the others knew that shortage too, but they, I didn't, know. they didn't admit to it. As, as they as say, reason. as you told me yes. later on, and that Mick wasn't very interested. No, he was more than not interested. Yes, he was antagonistic. A cock and bull story, just to say. I remember when you and Diane said that. Uh, yeah. and, uh, that meant we had all sources to him, they were closed. Yeah. Dick was sympathetic as he told, but he said he made as well resign. Because he said stuff. all over Dublin here and, and all the counties were looking for the very same thing that yes, I know. Mm -hmm. You see, and that he couldn't possibly give it a fight. Yes. The northern men. Mm -hmm. So we had a plan, our own plan, and the plan <coughs> was just on the same idea as ambitious as we have been holding up in the country place. Yes. The same dozen or two rifles. Yes, did the they all over. shot over to another place and all that. And it worked. Yeah. Not only did it get more ambitious, but the British thought we were. And the British newspapers, reporters, yes. the story worth telling. Yes. These. <coughs> they are pretty crazy. Were. They were only a desperate gang. <coughs> They were covered the whole country. Yes. They seemed to have limited supplies of arms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Unless their, their government would do something about it, they were going to have a hot time, you know. Yes. And that actually cooled them, they thought it was so. Yes. But we said that plan has worked there, it'll work better here because yes. instead of going across from one county to another, yes. you run up with the enemy. Yes. Or out through a front door and through a back door. Back door, yes. And we're ready to... Yes. See, uh, you, you know the... the it does the even better than house uh, work. You know the layout of the ball show. Yeah. <coughs> 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 street like Regular street running parallel to the falls. 
Yeah. The numbers he balaclava his teeth and a number of other things leading up. No, they had had the, that side of his teeth front of a house. That side of his teeth front of a house. Do you see? Yes. No, this side had a back to the house. Do you see? Yes. And at the back there's an entry. Yes. Entry for uh, fellows and up and down meat charts to get skins and stuff like that. Yes, I know. Old men to throw stuff at it. Yeah. Or bin men, there's no bins. Curse me. Yes. To empty the dump it. Yes. Well, now it'd be a state above there, three states up. And the crowd would be down that. Our crowd would be up there fire and meeting them up. Yes. And then you, down the hills and all, and instead of coming down, trying to pass where the brothers and mob were spying, our men came through the houses were all there, told them, did you? Yes. Our men came charging through the front door, that's it over there. Yeah. Right through the back door into the entry. And through the back door and out through the front door. Yes. Now you're in another state and you started shooting up there. They thought it was two different, two oh, different yes, areas. Sure. Yeah. Because then, ten minutes, half an hour, an hour later, these men jammed through the front door over there. Yeah. Right through the back door, entry, and yeah. through the entry, out, out again, and there was fire in there. Yeah. <coughs> and this, remember, was when the other side didn't know that we knew. Yes. They thought we were only gathering up. Yes, I know. And at, uh, before we would gather up, they had it all done. Yes, they'd have yeah, destroyed. The prize was there, they'd be destroyed. And so they came in mobs. Yes. No, not no regular thing at all. Uh -huh. They just went upon the kiln. Uh -huh. And they get it wherever they went. They were met. With a hot reception. And of course that naturally upset everything. They yes. Know, didn't know what had done. No. But in addition to that, I'd give them the very same impression as it gave the, the military. Yes. There must be thousands of fellows. Yes, indeed. All armed. Uh -huh. In the meantime, there was hundreds of them killed in that first assault. Because they, not expecting it, they were coming and yes. just mass formation. Uh -huh. and they could shoot. Uh -huh. You couldn't miss. <coughs> <coughs> You take a rest, you can tell me my name wrong of the thing I said down there. Well, then, at this time, when, when the, you knew the plan, then you, as actually as Inspector General, we call it, of the no. IRA. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Where, where you went oh. down to the IRA headquarters. No, I didn't go this time as Inspector General of the IRA headquarters. The cover for Tarona, Donegal, and Derry, and around there. I see. This was purely a bit fast. Uh, Antrim and Devon. Yes. You see, having started in this form. Yes. And that was the dense Protestant area, you see. I know. I went there as Chief of Intelligence for that brigade area. Oh, I see. To inform so IRA. Were, to inform the IRA. Yes. You see, the that our that. brigade was going to have to defend this, you yes. see. Mm. And therefore, I was naturally the one to be yes. picked because I was supposed to have cleaned the information. Well, yes, I know. I know. Well, that is, the information had to come through me. Uh, the thing is, you were going on a dual capacity to Dublin on this occasion. No. Do you remember yes. you had also to go? Yes. And you were in an invidious position because you're a May IRA member. Mm -hmm. I hadn't offered to go. No, I was asked by the brigade uh, to go. And it was when they got home that morning. They got yes. the morning they got home. No, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't the morning. It was just before curfew. Yes. We always had to get off the street. Seemed too silly to be caught for a curfew and all that. Yes, I know, yeah. <laughs> and when I got home, there was a note there written on me in the IRB. Same, in its own code, from a uh, meeting to see yes. Dublin. Uh -huh. <coughs> and that's how <coughs> I climbed into the first cleft stick. I remember you telling me. <coughs> well, well, that was right then. It was <coughs> it was as chief of an, brigade chief of We went to one. Went to one. Headquarters, which oh. is actually synonymous with the other. No, it went to the same. Oh, no. Well, and, it's, and the McGarry was the, and Collins and Gabriel, uh, what do you call it? Gerard O'Sullivan. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they, they were ARB. They were ARB, you ah. see. And there were some other ARB men. I know, but where? Well, myself. But there was a not perfect liaison between the two groups. There was, in a way, but our 
secret organization, <laughs> which lay sitting, as it were, a pact to show its authority. I they did things when they, they were the older men. They weren't meeting back and forward. No, even in the council. Uh -huh. Even in the council, in the, in the IRA council. They weren't, there was a bit of liaison personally here and there. Yes. But they weren't meeting one another, you see. Because naturally, the ones in the IRA council, who were not IRB, IRB. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't supposed to have any inkling that there was another council directing operations somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Do you see? So it, there was that Mick and Geraint and Sean and Murley were members of the IRA Yes. The rest of us weren't. I know. Do you see? You know? Yeah. But, <laughs> but as I told you, I knew that Mick and Geraint turned it down so vehemently yes. that I had a little chance of convincing the IRA of which I was I not see. a member. I mean, of that council. Uh. Do you see? They would say uh, and that was the occasion that they were in Vaughan's Hotel, wasn't it? No. Parnell Square? No. no. They were in Vaughan's Hotel a month or two before that. Oh, I see. On another... Oh yes, a concerning a Limerick occasion. officer. Aye, oh, suspicious occasion that somebody. A man who eventually did get shot. Was shot out of hand out of by hand. some of his men. Well, who wasn't satisfied that they had had a bit on proof. Aye, and Mike yeah. was indignant. And he was indignant, indignant you see. over that. And uh, well, I remember you. I remember you saying. I remember you telling me too how that that you said that they should wait. You see, because it wasn't enough. To condemn a man to be shot for, yes, just that's for right. playing cards, even mm. with a policeman present. Uh, it was. <laughs> it wasn't a proof. No, he was given information. No, I know. No, that's not. Really that's not. Uh, to, it's, it's extraneous to the matter. Oh, it is, yes. But that happened then. Um, yeah, but before you go, Jim, you told me yesterday in the car too how that from masonry, IRA adopted some of the government of their party. Do you remember you remember you told me? Oh, a yes. psychological <laughs> yeah, I took a leap out of there. And, and, and how did you explain that? It was, the, it was very subtle. Masonry, mm. briefly, its organisation was to get uh, and invite and get men into their organisation. Men of substance. Yes. Men of power. Yes. Holding uh, important posts in yes. the community. Yes. Do you see? And therefore, they started, well, they started in that, they, they, they got royalty in England. Yes, yes. Because that's royalty. There's always one member of the royalty. They were a certain amount of yeah. importance. Yes. <coughs> and then, they would get cabinet ministers. No, they wouldn't necessarily have their old bunch. No. Uh, then that big businessman, really yeah. big businessman. Yeah. And then they would have a few other men who were say engineers or scientists or yeah it was now DC that they the, the the scientists and oh did their work but they had men there who, and then they had men in sport yes but practically every walk of league yes do you see important key men important key men and they were brought in they're not all into the one meeting oh meeting. naturally not brought into a lodge in their own yes area do you see and they in turn having been built up over years yes the had meetings weekly, monthly, or fortnightly. I couldn't tell you exactly. Yeah. They had one and I who it was regular meetings, but there was also special meetings. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so funny. We went to live in Rathman Road when I was upset. It was one of the head masons at Dublin got it. Yes. He wasn't watching me. He didn't know me at all. No. I thought it was funny, but uh, he was ex post office officer. Ex-censor of all letters during the war. Is that right? Uh. Yes. And he was uh, the principal letters that were being watched for was IRA Kurd. And he even he was employed uh, under P.S. O'Higgins, I say. No. Oh, well, I mean, P.S. was his charge at the start. I know. Wasn't he must it? have been, I say. <laughs> I don't know where he was. Uh, unless you can recall it, he was. Postmaster yeah. during the war. I, I mean, only no, not during the war he wasn't. I agree uh, with you on that. But what I mean is that he was accepted on the staff of the 
of the taking over the GPO from the British. Presumably this oh, mission was there and, and the British stays. <laughs> it would be his age. See what I mean? By his age, if he retired at 65 when you people are living in Rathlin Road, he probably was, they gave him uh, an extension of leave during the war, seeing he was mm -hmm. a high official. So, but that he was taken over along with some of the personnel oh, yes. at the time. And they uh, managed it in their own way. They had their own little way to, uh, the head of the civil service was a little Masonic order ought to itself. Oh, I believe it would have been, yes. They were brought in uh, yeah. to, to, you know, to explain. But the civil service, it was started in the and in the early days, there was no exam. Yes. Still in ten, except that the Lord left them to the modern ah, school. Yes, I remember. Uh, except your people, and you got in. Yes. <laughs> but if your great grandfather's uncle had anything to do with land league or any other thing, you got like nowhere. That, you got nowhere. Never ah, I see. Nowhere. And even when it became a competitive exam, uh -huh. <laughs> and you got top placement, uh -huh. you were You'd have to go to London like Collins. You had to wait and take your turn. I you? pushed the west. Which never came. That's <coughs> my bit of way. Aye. <coughs> <coughs> no, that was easy to pay some sport. Goes a wee dog and goes out to rest for sale and goes out to fishing. And that's forgotten all about anything. They made. Uh, whatever we're talking about. We're talking about the sim similarity almost between the government uh, of uh, ARA and Masonry. Yes. No, no, no. Well, what I meant is the structure, the structure of the society. IRB. IRB. Right? Uh, I used to have it. Uh, yes. When these various circles or lodges of the masons met from time to time. They were instructed, you see, uh, by somebody above them. Uh, we need to say an engineer. Yes. Your area. See that that's got. Yes. You know. Yes. We need uh, some other thing. Yes. Stop grower. Your area. Yeah. Tend to it. Yes. These would be long-term plans, you see. Yeah. Now you're speaking mm -hmm. about ARB. In this oh, I'm speaking about Masonry. Yes. Any anyway, that was the structure. That was structure. Yes. Yeah, I want to yes. yes. You see. Well, even in the army, the yes. British army, they had their high-ranking officer. Yes. That's, that's the scene. <coughs> and I think they proved to you fairly well, and Tim Cashin had his men, where the officers in the corps wouldn't obey the government. That's true, yes. You see, of course, they had a higher thing to obey. Mm -hmm. they, they also... Well, in political organisations, I have missions. Yeah. Political organisations the same way, their own group. Yes. And one of the most important ones, the I have the women's men. Yes. Uh, I say most of them didn't give a damn about the women's men because they were only top and safety fellows. You know. That's it. They were only, uh, only the rabble to call them the one of them. And that uh, very much insulted of you to call them an orange man. Yes. You see, and I would nearly get telling you what circle I belonged to the Mason yes. to let you know them were. They were but superior other, to any orange. Oh, one. yes. The only thing was that the master of each orange lodge As usually a Mason. Was, was a Mason. They had to have one in there because they had to control every lodge. I see. So you the see, master is that, generally a Mason. That did two things. Mm -hmm. It got them and the, the master of the lodge was trained on how to get control of his men in the proper way. Ah, uh, this is uh, where the similarities uh, come up see, then. To get them to do it, whatever had to be done, if repetitive was needed, or haste, yeah. they did it. Uh -huh. And I suppose we've got ahead with him, but they didn't, I don't know. Yes, yes. But, that and our gentlemen when we get key men, and all of us instruct them, uh. on what to do in regard to their own walk of life with the yeah. most naturally fixed and report periodically to the lodge above. Yes, yeah, and go so on up. Goes up to the top if yeah. it was worth reporting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then uh, we, the young ones, 
so many old ones in the area. Days, but I hadn't the same chance that we had. We had a, an IRA organisation all over the country, a place to put them in immediately. Yes. We also had Gillick League. Yes. To put them in immediately. Now, the ones of sale, 1880. Yes. Well, they had no fighting men. No. And they had no Gillick League. And they had no GAA. They had only the heads, you know. Yes. <coughs> They had their men in their head, as you see. Yes. But uh, generally, the Argus. Yes, yes. And then we copied the little efforts they had made and the big efforts, successful ones, of the English Guard. The Masons? Masons. Ah. We packed them in the Gaelic League, GAA. Yeah. And pushed the world in the IRA. Yeah. And the same way up and down the country. We yes. Well, at least it was in the Nations and Colin Maris where he got him. Yes. Take his wee move. Uh-huh. But he, I'm sorry to say, he didn't find a lot of nationality there. No, you never did. Big you? move. Anyhow. But that was, and it worked. It worked a long time. I in a few months sometimes you got complete control. Yes. Depends on the urgency of it. Yeah. Aspirin. Yeah. <coughs> the 1918 convention. Mm-hmm. Where the article yeah. went out of the leadership of Sinn Fein. Sinn Fein. Yeah. That's where they went in. Yes. I remember there was a lot of bitterness at the time. It wasn't brought to the surface. Yes. All at all, and with my all as prohibited from the battle, so yes. we can't let the enemy know. Well, Arthur Griffith was in the IRB. Oh, he was. Was he not? He was hard in the IRA. Is that so? What was the trouble, do you see? Dear, oh, I thought you'd realize that. No. He believed in the Constitution of 82. Oh, I see. Yes, yes of course. Ah, ah. The, uh, the reconstitution of the ah, parliament. Yes, Ratton's parliament. It was already in being. Yes. And they had nothing to do but demand it and put it into yes, being I again. See, yes. Only to have elections with uh, more papers, you let us say. Yes, the portion of representation ah, yes. still there. <laughs> <laughs> the, he was at the scene, but uh, even they had that idea. It was he originated the Sinn Féin idea. Ah, I see. Well, some of us, by accident, would have had. Uh, we didn't know we were doing it, if you know what I mean. Yes. There's the Dungannon Club and other things like that. Ah, that was the forerunner of Sinn Féin Club. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Griffith saw the idea of the, this organization, a, a real literary organization where the people could be educated. Yes. And he saw a big lot in the name. Yes. Sinn Féin, ourselves, yes, yes. alone. Ah. You see, you don't pay because the British, the British MPs, you know, the Irish Party. Irish Party, yeah. They uh, preached at that time. We'll go to the floor of the house and demand, and we'll uh, build up a backing for the Liberals, for the Tories, or somebody else, you see. Yes. And vote the other side out, and then we have respect for it. Yes. And that's how they were going to get home rule. I know. Well, uh, Griffith pointed out many articles that, that didn't work before and wasn't going to work again. Yes. That the Irish, uh, the British MPs weren't uh, such sheep as to, to be led by the nose by the Irish. By the Irish parliamentary party. Yeah. He then called Sinn Féin, the key, <coughs> ourselves alone. Yes. Which meant we'll do this fight ourselves yes. alone. And then, of course, he wrote the 82 Parliament up most magnificently. Yeah. And prior to that, as you know, he, he had already written the famous... Resurrection of Hungary, Hungary, yes. And he could write. Yes. He could write. And you, of course, know he was more or less trained as a writer in yes. South Africa. Yes, that's right. Well, he had been trained to do it here, but after the war, he went over there. And now he came back with a voice he could stick pins if he wanted to do them. Yes. Yeah. Well, bam, stick bam. And you could, uh, he, he, he could have demolish an argument, brother. With, with, with a second anybody's stomach, that made yeah. the argument. You know? Yeah. But he was now, the raising was over. Yes. And 
seemed to be a, was a big power coming, growing up. It was the only political thing. Yes, I know. And our side saw that mm. and uh, decided that uh, he, good man and all as he was, he was not the man to the head of the political movement. If they wouldn't have a physical force. man on a physical force. Ah. He had better get somebody who had some connection with physical force. Yes, that's right. In the political movement. Yeah. Uh, the ideas were a bit more advanced. Yeah. The idea of this Sinn Féin would be built up right at the head committee uh -huh. Sinn Féin would be an embryo of government yeah. of the Republic. I see. And it couldn't be a party. No, the deal with the Sinn Féin may be too far. No, only... Break the connection with England. Break the connection, is it? And so, the fixed on day of... Yes. The day of wasn't a member either. See. No, he was. But he was the leading figure he met out of the I asked you to last the leaders to. After you see, and the only leader who killed. left, you see. And uh, had declared himself in favour of continuing the struggle. Yes, I know. I mean, there's no doubt about him. Mm. He was just uh, very honest. Yes. No, but I liked about him too, of course. You might guess that. He's very religious. Yes. Every evening in Lincoln, that's the place I saw it. I spent from six until seven reading the imitation of Christ. Yes, I remember in Lincoln uh, Prison. I remember the time there. Imitation of D.C. And uh, if, uh, there was a wee bit of a titter or a leg that at the rosary, as it often was, you see. Dave didn't point out to him as, as leader that they shouldn't be doing that. There was yeah. a man. He just had the one reply to it, boys would say. That, Rosie and herself tonight. Yes, he if there was any tittering at the general. Uh, just stood up and walked away. Yeah. Do you see? I mean, no, no. I was here, I think you can go to hell when you your own Rosie. Uh. No, no, they didn't say it if he wasn't there. That's right. Do you see? Well, they, he had got that little control. Yeah, well, because he was a direct, a serious, oh, a trustworthy it? person. Well, he. That was one of my jobs. Yes. Uh, IOB jobs. Yes. Around my name counties. Yes. Billy Wick. <laughs> and to tell them that their principal work now was to get into Sinn Féin local club. Yes. And if there was no Sinn Féin local club, woman. Yes. And they could get literature and so on about it and so on like that. So on that. Yeah. Just knew about it, not at all. Now, having got into this club, he would uh, uh, become secretary or chairman or treasurer of the command, and it would lead them to be appointed a delegate. Yeah. And I told you the other day then about how you did it. You had seven, eight, or ten men pledged, yeah. and the other twenty weren't. Yes. Didn't know about these men. These ten. And each one of these had got one friend amongst the twenty, and that you were double aces. Yes. Did he? And you meant that there was ten in the Sinn Féin Commons that made no. the IRB? Yes. And the other twenty may not necessarily be. Oh, no. If there were, you would count amongst the ten, as it were. And, and what I mean is that... In a group of thirty. Yes. You didn't need sixteen. No. Do you see? Uh, you only needed about seven or eight. Yes. And um, then each one of those eight made friends with two uh, people. No, no. What's the one? Eh, but one. Do you see, there was now these ten I mm -hmm. sitting there. Over there in the corner was twenty anti these. Yes. Unwittingly. Yes. No. Ah. Didn't know they were up against them. Yeah. These ones knew that they were a compact group, but these ones didn't know. Yes. And they were sitting over there, if you know what I mean. Ah, they were mixed by them when they were there's ten. But what there's do you mean in the sense that they were anti? Is that there are parliamentary still? Yes. Oh I see. I, and, uh, like and your idea was to infiltrate. Uh, they weren't I. They, they weren't necessarily gunmen at all. No, no, I know. But they, they could have been. They were in favour of Sinn Féin. Uh, in favour of. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, physical force. Uh, non physical force. Oh, I see. Practically, so. Oh, I see. Passive resistance. Now, these ten were usually. Uh, they got this instruction. Send men into that common who can talk when they know. Yeah. 
know what they're talking about. Yes. Intelligent one. And bonus, you know, a wee bit about psychology, you usually had to explain that to them. Then they knew how to be friends. Yes. Work on it. Would make their impact on the other. Aye. Now, as I say, they're now in, and uh, there's a meeting, and that's all it's about it then. And before the next meeting, each one of those ten has already picked out someone yes. that he knows maybe fairly well, or doesn't know yes. the material. And between that and the next meeting, he kind of has a whole lot to say to this lad yes. oh, about the crops and anything he has to say, maybe about girls or anything. Yes, I know. But he makes friends with them. But Tim, at least we we we'll take it for purposes of this story that there's thirty there. You see, and these ten are influenced and subtly yes. the other twenty with a view to bring them up to such a pitch yes. that the eventually become very good IRA men. Yes. Were these um, were these just uh, ordinary people? All the these sort of all came from the same district, presumably. Oh, well, yes. They were neighbours. Yes. <laughs> Did, we, did the twenty non-aligned uh, not feel, or it was done so subtly that they didn't know it was that? Oh, they didn't, didn't realise that one these bit, ten were in a higher plane. One bit of knew that they, there was a very fine chap, one of these I new, see. newcomers. Ah. He didn't know that very fine chap ah. was putting it on. No, oh, I see. Would be a very fine. Uh-huh. Do you see? And each one of those cut one of them, the two of them made a list getting anybody. Yes. But anyway, in a month's time or two months' time, They've got a majority. If they've got one each set, twenty a year now. Yeah. You see, there. because from my recollection of of the early days of common, I in Marathon, I should think there was hardly a physical force man in the whole group. Now you see, I think we were a very rotten crowd around Marathon. Mm-hmm. The hips had been too strong. Just hmm. the hips had been too strong. Too strong, Seamus. Like and they were, they were not a trustworthy group mm-hmm. in the sense that they would take drink. Oh, I see. That, uh, you see, mm-hmm. so therefore they, weren't, they wouldn't have been trusted. They were and they been blab, like when they were blab, and for that know. reason, I should say that it's a pitiable story that would be for the, in the early days of IRA or late days of IRB, ranking as Swift Dairy, apart from you talk about Hugh Gribbon, he wasn't there, IRB, IRB, and a few others down around there. But I would say that you made very painful progress mm-hmm. in the home yes. of your grandmother. Oh, yeah, Reliable. Old Lewis was an old gentleman, an old man, and was gone past the days of anything but talk. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, there was the town finished. Now, Anthony McGurk would have been a strong man. A good man, too. Anthony would be a trustworthy man. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Welches might have been in a way, but the vacillated a lot. Well, they were no harm to him. I suppose they weren't courageous now. No, they weren't, and they weren't fighting men. And no, and, and imperialism had made great inroads into them. Oh, but I'd never noticed that, mate. Well, you know. would have, for I would have known their cousins in Marafelt, you see, oh, who yes, were I. cheeked by Gerald with the gentry. Mm. I see. And with post cars and hired cars. Draperstown was an area that must have been a source of sadness, too, because it's a preponderantly nationalist one. Mm-hmm. But Ayo A which had made great inroads upon it. Right. Money more there wasn't many. You told me about Major Morris who came, he was dismissed from the army. Didn't know he was dismissed. Well mate. I thought you said he was he had, he had medals, he was quite oh, he had got medals for bravery. Yes. But where was he a native of I wonder? Oh somewhere oh I couldn't tell you. Somewhere up there, but I understood it was from Derry City. I thought so. That could be. Uh, I'm not so sure. Oh, he was around money more mm-hmm. in some shape or form. Aye, well, then he, well, I, I met him down a bit, around about Ballardy area, somewhere around there. Yes. Somebody was with him. Oh, then, yeah, to come to that, you, you had not money more then, the loop, airways, very much airways around the loop. Mm-hmm. Then you had the little nucleus, so such a tiny nucleus at Ballardy. Mm-hmm. And you were finished at that. I would say so. Because Arbo, there might have been some. Mm-hmm. And then you were getting on towards Gulliden, which was pretty good, although not so good, seeing that only 12 good men and two turned out of a possible 300. <laughs> the time of the, 
the time of the mythical theatre. And it was. This was the, this was you were supposed to meet on the insurrection day. I remember you told yes. me, and there was only twelve. No, I thought that. So this is what I'm trying to get. There was a Sinn Féin coming then. You see, established in my health. Presumably, you might have been at the establishment of it, since that was your duty at the time. At the period I speak of was 1917. It must have been. I could. I don't recall. I mean, there was half that many people. When well, you were on Lewis, I don't think it was that. It. Was it because it of? Could have been early in seventeen. Ah. Well, when you'd been Lewis Smith, say, on the very, say, or on our house, it would only be in friendship, I should think. Oh, was an old friend of mine. Ah. Oh, and of course, apart from that, yes. that's an old, I looked on him as an old fiend. Yes, he I was an old been, fiend, yes. He's an old fiend. Mm. And, uh, but I don't recall being at a meeting of some fiend then. No. Uh, I started somewhere in the late summer, I told you that, of 1917. Yes. Now that could have been a hell a week before I you got around, jail, yeah. home, you know. So the, but I think if I had been there, I would have remembered it. As a, said on a horish. I know you would have. Uh, well, there would have been a Sinn Féin come presumably and uh, ran on a horse on Newbridge. There was, but I, I wasn't there either. No. The only place where we had, I got the instructions here first of what areas to tackle. Yes. In any place where there was one or two good men. Yes. They usually they would leave it to them. Yes. Even there's only oh, one. I remember you sent them that yesterday. You yes. see. Ah. And uh, where you had to go and get a fellow's name and get him packed by somebody. Yes. No, get him introduced by somebody saying, I think he's a, he's a trustworthy man. Yes. See what you can do with him. Just like Barney Mullen was ah, a very yeah, trustworthy yes. man. Oh, Brian, and was, he, was he in Ben Burb? He was in. No. No, no it was he was, was in Ben Burb. Aye, and he, Barney was on the way from Armagh City. On a house near a quarry. Near a quarry. I remember, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> well, at least Barney was better than the Fermanagh ones that only met once in oh, several sure years. Oh, sure he was. Well, ah. Barney was quite good. It was so Barney was very good. He, he was so good, I was going to say. Ah. Yeah, but uh, impertinent. He's so good he pulled me. Yes, I know. <laughs> by doing the mug. Aye. You see, and he escaped by doing the mug. Yes, I you know. You see any G-man at Met Barney Aye. would take the same impression him at the wrong fellow. Yes, yes. That fellow would have done it, you see. And with a mouth. I know, hanging like a slap lip. Ah. Didn't but know. But get back again then, it was this, the town you people then were supposed to influence in a quiet, insidious manner, quiet and friendly manner, until you could see whether the material that was there amongst the other 20 mm -hmm. would eventually make suitable material for IRA, yes. not necessarily IRB. Oh, no, not necessarily. No, they were selected. <coughs> 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 if the area was, we had to find that out too from some, if the area was a place that was needed, <coughs> more than two or three men to organise it for IRA. Yes. Then he got a few more men into the IRB to help. I see, team. yes. Sometimes you only take in one. Yes. Do you see, until uh. later on when you let us know that there's somebody around here that you could trust with your life, let uh. us know. Uh, well, as we say, IRB is hardly asked on at the moment, whether it is or not, I don't know, or not interested. In those days, it was a secret organisation to the extent in which masonry is also secret. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you do, had you sp uh, Spanish words or science or anything? Oh, no, no, Nothing no. at all like that? No. There, there was someone had been in the old ones and I didn't do it. And it was a bit funny when I'm doing it. Uh, Sir Henry, you see, Sir Yes. Sir Henry, Like this, huh? I got the thumb in there. And, and, and in the palm of hand. Uh, and no, and here. Oh, and that part, yes. If you didn't answer, uh, you got it a wee bit harder. And then, uh, I said. If you didn't do anything. <laughs> he's no good. He's no, not a one of ours. Not one of ours. But you're I, right. I, I think I would have answered it for a man like Lewis Smith. I know. Not to hurt the old man. I know, yes. But the younger ones. The younger ones, ones. They did away with these simple, I, silly things. Aye, they were. They, uh, we looked at Mr. This is the romantic side of it, so to speak. It wasn't the practical side. It was looked on at the time in Lincoln and Street in my time. Now, if you had scientific, it was going to be darned easy for 
It's he might be dead. Get the same sign. So I sure I know. Back but, but your messages were always in code. Oh, I wouldn't know when I'd be No, there was something very you know, bit plain enough. Only uh, something very important. Well, the, uh, did the code take the form of Jarvis letters or numerals? I uh, well, like a mixture. Yes. Two of the various kinds. You had your own, more or less, <laughs> for your own benefit. Oh, you would, have a, you would make a personal code with I, some of your own I, in the nine counties. If I wanted an important message that I didn't want caught on, I wouldn't put it in reading it. Oh, no. I would get a messenger to go to the next circle. Yes. Center. And he, in turn, had to either send my message or send another one on. But to verbally. And to get there the quickest possible way. Yes. And it got there quicker than the note would have got. I know, just like the yeah, Africans can send a message. They were touching one another and going off. Yes, see, I know. Like playing tig. I know. But. Well, now there I have got the similarity, not in their aims, but the similarity and, the constru and structure of the societies because mm. of the psychological approach of masonry to get controlled. Oh, yeah. But then now we come now to the formation of the IRA, which came what, when would be it? In 1918, well, or before it? No, in 1915. Yes. Oh, of course, that's 15, before the rebellion, of course. Before the rebellion. Uh, and after our friend Carson's. Yes, he did a great job for he Ireland, of course. He, he, really, he really should be honoured in the free state. Right. Because he, he introduced way, physical force at the Ireland. Right, he opened the way for us. And well, if you want to rest him, I'll give you a rest. Thank you. Yeah, be, I mean to talk. It's not fair to make a man lying in bed talk so much. Mm -hmm. But then I, 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 I'll, uh, I'll do the talk and then let's, mm -hmm. they, like it was formed there. And whenever the, uh, mm -hmm. the Hibernian volunteers, Redmonds used to train down in Celtic Park, mm -hmm. they didn't do much training. You know, they did listen to speeches. Yeah. You people went to Sean's Park. No. Oh. Well, yes, we did a few times to Sean's Park, but then mostly up to the Willow Bank Huts. Oh, yes. yes so it was comparatively few. Uh -huh. And we didn't do maneuvers in front of people because it was given the show away in our numbers. I know. You had only had one to do maneuvers. Five people. Went up to the mountain. I know. To see him. That's up by, uh, by the Lisbon direction. No, no, that was up White Rock Road. Oh, White Rock. There was an yeah. opening there that brought us in across the Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. That's the place I think it told you about the, uh, the fella hiding in a drain on the 15th of January. And out of a drain, it was petrified. I didn't tell you this before. No, he didn't. Well, the maneuvers that day was that there was enemy troops right across the mountain from us. Oh, yeah. Ah, you mean you were playing at soldier? Playing at soldier. Time. And there were three men selected to go across that mountain and uh, inside three quarters of an hour they were to be in hiding. Yes. Now, uh, reality didn't mean there's only three, didn't they? Thirty or three hundred. Ah, you were saying that there we were thirty. Uh, we were. Ah. Now the main body was divided into sections now, and we were sent up by a brigadier to go surround those and get them, yeah. without them getting you. Yeah. So uh, we, it was a most beautiful January morning on the way up, good crisp winter air. Yeah. And it kept that way until it got us about halfway across the mountain. Yeah. And then it started to come down. No boys, no one sleep. It was, it was a mixture of everything. And in no time we were all sunk. <laughs> literally, and literally. literally. <laughs> and even so, uh, soldiers couldn't run away with it. They just said, no, no. No, no. They were told to keep them on going. And we kept on going. And finally succeeded in getting two of the men. Yeah. We, we captured them. Before they got a chance of firing at us to see. Yes. And then the third one couldn't have found it at all. Yes. And there was a consultation, an anxious consultation, because this place was full of holes and. Yes. You know, I don't not, know. not necessarily bog holes, but holes are do And that means. He made a 
phone, no one is getting got their hand or phone yeah. down in fact, you know. And <coughs> spread out again now to go back. Where I was kind of agreed he couldn't be any farther back than us. Yeah. We'd go back towards the town yeah. and hope to find him. And we did find him on the way back. Yes. But we almost missed him on the way back. Yes. Even on the way back with the whole the whole three companies. Yeah, the captured and the captured. Yeah. The whole three of them trying to get him. Yes. And uh you know, coming there like you know, every two but uh, two yards from one of us yeah. and taking in a great yeah. big and he appeared suddenly in front of two of them. I haven't seen him at all. He came up out of a hole. Yes. And he had been up to the neck. Yes. In freezing water. Peered out. He was bent and not been cut. Do you see? Yes. And that was only an excuse for you who had failed to find him. I know, yes. I don't know who the head would expect a better than a day like that. On a January day up to the neck of water. And he, the, the now prisoner, had been, yeah. there was a war on, you would do it to escape. Yes, of course. And there was a war on for me to see, and I escaped, you see. I know. I can always remember that the lad. But know. he would be petrified. Boys, he was, and a uh, funny thing. I was also petrified, and so was the rest of them. But the water had come from above. I know, and you were in movement. Aye, and I was moving. To yes, I know. <laughs> but that same day, I had a match to play in Sean's part. Yes. And some versus one on. Yes. Early match. Early match. And I had to get a leave. <coughs> Somewhere about two from Sean O'Neill to leave the period. Yes. That I had to go to this hurling match. You see? Yes, yes. Now my idea was about a quarter to two I'd got to leave was to go right home to Cavendish Street. And change. Change everything of course and go yes. up to the park and change again at the hurling suits and Yes, right. I know, yes. By the time I clattered down that mountain, and at one stage clattered up it again, yes. I had a pretty old prince pennant, a scabbard, and the scabbard was nearly as sharp as a pennant. Yes. One of the three pronged, and pennant said a French. Yes. 18 and 60 or something. Uh, I found myself with a a pennant when I was down near the bottom of the mountain. Yes. And I had to go back up again. Look, be a bit. Couldn't leave the bit of stuff in the mud. Yes. And I had to get it. Luckily, I knew very generally what we had come down. Dear oh. So when I was up about halfway up, I saw, saw it sticking up there. In the snow. Oh, well, the in snow the snow wouldn't be down the foothills, probably. No, it wasn't. Well, no, it was ah. snow there, but it wasn't buried in it. No. Anyhow, I hadn't time to go home. Dear goodness. I went into the pavilion and so yes. on. Yes. And started to undress. Mm. And that fellow, Pat McFadden, I mentioned to you before, he was there. And he was sitting beside him. And I, I found trouble getting off the drawers and socks. Yes, and they were stuck to me. Ah. And that was all right when he came back. Went out and played the game. And boys, there were three or four big dams. Now, I'd say three times as big as this room. Yes. On the pitch. Yes. Now, there would be only maybe Four inches, inches deep. Ah. No, not none. No, no. You could run through them. Ah. I remember we had one big, strong fella, Jack Waters was his name. He got the Waters. He made a dive at one of the Monaghan men. And the Monaghan men yes. ducked. Yes. And he ducked too. Right ahead first into one of these dams and slid the whole way along it. <laughs> he didn't wait to get away right enough. Ah. And about ten minutes later, he disappeared. <laughs> He had a bit of a cold on him. No, I had a cold too. Yes, yes. I had a nice bit of a cold, but I thought it was only a bit of a cold. Yes. You know, and therefore nothing to worry about. Turned out it was influenza. Yes. And also turns out that I happened to do the right thing. When we were back in there, at the end of the match, it was a draw. Yes. After us fighting away in it. Uh, yes. And uh, we were told not to undress or not to dress in the pavilion to the county. The Ulster Council would meet. They were all there, do you see? Yes. Uh, being a final 
to decide whether or not they would play the match now. Replay it. Yes. Or play ten minutes each way. Ah, yes, this, this one. Day. And we told them that they could play it anyway, the league. And we would let them wear jerseys. Yes, but you had, had enough. Done, no, 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 we had had enough. So we got to set it at the end. <laughs> and I was again, my clothes were so packed. And when I got fought my way through, getting the drawers on where we were ready to jump, I came to me. They socks, my friend, well, but you get all the way. I said, I was out in the snow. And I said, he ring them before you put them on you. Yes. I said, I sure saw the same, there's what this will be any. I said, a wee bit of comfort if you ring them. So I wouldn't ring them just because of this. I wanted to get dressed and get home. Yeah. He took them and he rung them. He said, oh, about two coppers of water. Yes. I said, I went home, make it to the story short. Got two plates of soup. Yes. And two cups of tea. Yes. And he ate nothing. Yes. And upstairs and had a hot bath. Yes. I came down again and sat on the 11 or 12 and made a kitchen fire. Yes. And the following morning got up with me cold, completely cold. Yes. At the, on another occasion, I remember you telling me where you went to some woman. And oh, I, but that was a, I had no cold at that time. I was just frozen. Ah. Dry. My dry feeling. Was that, was that a dry trace? That was down about... Colain. Well, it was in beyond Colain. So yes, dry trace you were to meet these I men. I met them in dry And you got a real friend that for you had the... You met them in an old house. Aye, and that only created a draught. That's was right. Being. When my son in the open I could have yeah. stood in the lee or just And you she asked you would you take a cup of soup or something, you take a bowl for oh, you said take a bucket for. <laughs> oh, it is. Ah. It took no wonder you have run control of this, you know. Sure. Oh, no. You remember the time you rode through the flood at Machery? Oh, well, that was a joke. I mean I had a look at that as a joke. I had one serious one about riding through a flood. Coming down, I don't know where. From a single house away in the mountain, above Pumrai, away yeah. in the, near the top of the mountain, there was one single house, a farm, it's all made alone. Yeah. And one of our men lived in it. Yes. And I had to see him. Yes. And they went up, couldn't get on the base. No. I mean, it was come up that way. I walked up, but I said to myself, I'll get the good of it coming down. Yes. So I did. After I'd seen him, I got onto the back and he said, Why did you, mister? Be careful down there. Yeah. Well, I told him, there's nothing in the way, but something may come in the way. Away, <laughs> <laughs> man. I had two good breaks. Yes. Thought I had. I went there and I kept it within about, as far as I could judge, about 18 or 20 metres an hour. Down yes, this. yes. Not a thing, you know, whole world in the room. No. Lay that down. And then, <coughs> about three or four hundred yards away, I saw the end of the road had nothing beyond it. Yes. 